In this video, we're going to talk about circles and chords and things like that. So here's a circle. The distance between the center of a circle and any point on a circle is known as the radius of the circle. Now the distance between two points on a circle, let's call it point A, point B. And let's say this is the center C. So if we draw a line between point A and B, and if it passes through the center, then AB represents the diameter of a circle. The diameter is twice the value of the radius. So D is equal to 2R. Now, any of the two points on a circle, if we have a line between them, or rather a segment between those two points, that's known as a chord. So CD is a chord. Now, what else do we need to know about chords? So let's say this is the center, and let's call this chord AB. And here we have center C. Now, let's draw a segment between C and chord AB. And let's call this new point, point D. Now, if if segment CD is perpendicular to AB, so if we draw in such a way that CD and AB meet at a right angle, then CD bisects AB. So that means that AD and DB are congruent. So make sure you understand that. So if you draw a segment between the center of the circle to any chord, and if you draw it at a right angle, then this segment becomes the perpendicular bisector of the chord. So AD is congruent to DB. Now there's another theorem that you need to know about chords. So let's say this is the center, and we have a chord here and another chord here. Let's call this chord AB and DE. And this is going to be center C. Now let's say that, well, let's also call this uh, F and G. Now, if CF is congruent to CG, then AB is congruent to DE. So let's say if CF is 5 and CG is 5. Now, if AB is equal to 12, what is the value of DE? So if these two are congruent, if they're equal to each other, and that means that DE is going to be equal to AB. So if AB is 12, DE is 12. So that's the concept of congruent chords. If they're equally distant from the center, then they are congruent. So anytime two chords of a circle are equally distant from the center, then the two chords are congruent. Now, what if CF is perpendicular to AB? What do we know from the last theorem? If that's the case, then F is the midpoint of AB. So AF is congruent to FB. And if CG is perpendicular to DE, that means that DG has to equal GE. And if these two are equal to each other, then these sides will not only be equal to each other, but they're also equal to the other sides as well. So those are some theorems to keep in mind when you're dealing with chords and circles. Now let's work on some problems. So let's say this is the center, and we have a chord here, and another chord there. Let's call this chord AB and DE. And this is going to be center C. Let's 
let's call this point F and G. So let's say that you're given AB is equal to DE. And let's say that CF is equal to 5x plus 3. And CG is equal to 7x minus 5. So with this information, what is the length of, let's say, FG? Feel free to pause the video. So first, we need to calculate the value of x. If AB is equal to DE, then we know that CF and CG are equal to each other. So let's set them equal to each other. So that means that 5x plus 3 has to equal 7x minus 5. So let's subtract both sides by 5x. And let's add 5 to both sides. So we can cross out these two. 3 plus 5 is 8. And 7x minus 5x is 2x. Now let's divide both sides by 2. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. So x is equal to 4. So now we could find the value of CF. So that's 5 times 4 plus 3. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. So CF is 23, which means that CG is 23. Now FG is the sum of FC and CG. So it's 23 plus 23, which is 46. So this is the answer. And so that's it for this problem. Now I'm going to give you another problem that's related to this circle. Now let me get rid of this too. So let's say that CG is perpendicular to DE. And you're given that DG is equal to 5x minus 2. And also, DE is equal to 7x plus 14. So with this information, determine the length of segment DE. How long is it? So feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. Now, if CG is perpendicular to DE, we know that DG and GE are congruent. So let's say if DG is 5, that means GE is 5. But DE itself, the whole thing, has to be 10. And 5 is half of 10. So therefore, we could say that DG is one half of DE. So if DG is 5x minus 2, that has to be one half of 7x plus 14. Now, let's calculate the value of x. Let's multiply both sides by 2. So half of 2 is 1. And 2 times 5x is 10x. We need to distribute. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And once we get rid of the 1 half on this side, we don't need the parentheses. So it's just 7x plus 14. So now let's add 4 to both sides. And let's subtract both sides by 7x. So 10x minus 7x is 3x. And 14 plus 4 is 18. So now let's divide both sides by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So x is equal to 6. So now we can calculate DE using this expression. So 7 times 6 plus 14. 
7 times 6 is 42. 42 plus 14 is 56. And we know that DG is half of DE. So DG is 28. GE is 28. But DE as a to like the whole thing, that's a 56. And so that's the answer for this problem. Now let's work on some word problems. A chord is 6 centimeters away from the center of a circle. If the chord is 16 centimeters long, what is the radius of the circle? So let's start with a picture. And let's say this is the center, and let's say this is the chord. Let's call it chord AB. This is center C, and we'll call this point D. So let's draw a perpendicular line between the center and segment AB. That's going to be the shortest distance between the center and the chord. And so these two will meet at right angles. Now we know that the chord is 6 centimeters away from the center of the circle. So that means CD is 6 units long. Now the chord is 16 centimeters. So segment AB is 16 units long. And we know that if CD is perpendicular to AB, then AD and DB are congruent. So DB has to be half of AB. Half of 16 is 8. So let's put an 8 here. Now the radius is distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. So that's the radius of the circle. So basically, we need to calculate the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse is the radius of the circle, so that's r. Let's say that a is 6 and b is 8. 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64. 36 plus 64 is 100. So if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that the radius of the circle is 10 units long, or 10 centimeters long. Number two, what is the distance between the center of a circle and a chord that is 24 centimeters long if the diameter is 26 centimeters long? So go ahead and try this problem. Let's say this is the center, and this is the chord of interest. And this is going to be the diameter of the circle. So let's call this chord AB, center C, and point D. So D is the midpoint of AB, as long as CD is perpendicular to AB. Now we know that the chord is 24 centimeters long. So AB is 24. And since CD is perpendicular to AB, AD is equal to DB. Those two segments are congruent which means db has to be 12. Now we're told that the diameter is 26 units long. So let's call this E and F. So C is the center. That means CE and CF, they're congruent. They're the radius of the circle. So the radius of the circle is half of the diameter. So R is 1 half of D. Half of 26 is 13. So CF is 13. So how can we calculate X, CD, the distance between the center of a circle and the chord? Now, if we make a right triangle, notice that CB is also 13. The distance between any point on a circle and the center of the circle is the radius of the circle. So now we just got to find the missing side length of the right triangle. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So let's say a is x and b is 12 and c is 13. 13 squared is 169. 12 squared is 144. 169 minus 144 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And so that's the distance between the chord and the center of the circle. 
A 6 by 8 rectangle is inscribed in a circle. What is the radius of the circle? Feel free to pause the video and try it. So the rectangle is inside of the circle. And let's say this is the center of the circle. Now let's call this AB and DF, or DE, and this is going to be center C. So the radius is from the center to any point on the circle. So we can say that AC represents the radius. Now AE, that's going to be 6 centimeters long. And DE, that's 8 centimeters long. So if we draw a point, let's say the midpoint of AE, Let's call that point F. Then AF has to be half of AE. So AF is 3. CF has to be half of DE. So that has to be 4. Because the center is basically the midpoint between the diameter of a circle. It's like in the middle of the circle. So CF has to be half of DE, AF has to be half of AE. So now we can calculate the radius. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So R squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 times 3 is 9, 4 squared is 16. And 9 plus 16 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that's how you can calculate the radius of a circle if you have a rectangle that is inscribed inside of a circle.